Okay, so we actually have no clue what's in the box. We have been told by the team that, that this episode will be full of unknowns. All, all that we know about these gemstones is that they all are, or minerals, are gonna start with the letter A, and that they're ones that we typically don't talk about. They're unknown A's. So we're gonna take this opportunity to kind of highlight uh, some minerals and gems varieties that we don't really talk about on a regular basis, don't get a lot of press coverage, not a lot of publicity. So we kind of want to bring them into the light. I'll do the first one. Okay. Oh. Wow. I'll take that take one. I'll take that one. So what do you notice about that? I'm gonna take notes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I think these are the same thing. I would agree. I would this agree. looks like a feldspar to me, this white matrix. And then I think these guys are the same. Very lustrous. Very lustrous, very dark black, very much opaque. I'm not getting any light through this. You know what might be interesting? What's that? It might not actually be black. That's true. It could be so heavily saturated that it could be a, uh, a different color. I think I remember, uh, actually, now that I think about it, writing a caption for Instagram about a long, slender black gemstone with crystals uh, growing on it. And I believe if I remember correctly, it's Agerine. Yes. So I think you were right. It's so, so heavily saturated with color that it may not actually be exactly black. It could be green, it could be- Dark brown. It could be brown as well. Agerine is named after the Norse god of the sea, Aegir. It was originally found in Norway, first described around 1821. So it's actually been around for mm. quite a long time. It's part of the monoclinic crystal system, which as mm. is microcline feldspar. And so you have this, one way that you can identify this crystal system is it kind of looks like a, a slanted, rectangle yeah. or box you look at it in cross section or down the length of the crystal you can kind of see this like wonky mm -hmm. box and so that is the first thing i thought of when i saw the washington monument yeah. shaped crystal it's a sodium iron silicate it has a it's, hardness of six. Yeah, it's relatively hard, not quite quartz. So, Adrian is a member of the pyroxene group. So, other members of the pyroxene group include jadeite, spodumene, diopside. I don't think I've ever seen a faceted Adrian. Definitely not Adrian in jewelry. And that might just be due to the fact that it's so heavily, heavily saturated with color that it just looks black, you know. It is really vitreous, though. Yeah, I also wonder though if it has to do with the shape of the crystal. So a lot of these, they're long and slender. You're not going to get really large, fastable pieces mm -hmm. out of this. One thing that I think is really cool about, I mean, this luster to me is really, it has a it's really nice high. high luster. It actually has a really high refractive index. So when you're taking the RI of the stone, it's going to be what's called over the limit, which means over the detectable range, or it's about over 1.81 approximately. So it has moderate to strong dispersion, but that's difficult to see because it's usually so saturated that it looks opaque. No, I mean, you, I can't even, I'm holding it up to the to the set lights and it's, it's it's not, it's not letting any light through. Oh, that's cool. Look at the green. Some stuff. So I see a bunch of triangular forms. Do you see that? Yes, I do. I, I wish I had the loop. So what I see are a bunch of like bunches and then they come to a point and then they like splay out kind of like broccoli. Yeah. Do you see that? Yeah, yeah, I do, yeah. It's kind of hard to think of an unknown just out of, your, you have to like go way back in the cobwebs of your mind to remember some of these A stones. Yeah, I'm strolling through my mind palace right now. These are both atomite specimens. Pure atomite is actually colorless, um, but this, these specimens in particular, this kind of pale green yellow is getting its color from iron compounds. It's a pretty brittle stone, so you're not gonna find it in faceted gemstones by and large. It's a three and a half on the Mohs scale. It has planes of cleavage. Also in the way that it forms, like as you can tell, this would be pretty difficult to get a faceted gemstone out of specimens like this. Well, I'm thinking about how you compared it to broccoli, you know, when you're trying to trim broccoli. Yeah. It just You end up with a cutting board of just littered yeah. with <laughs> broccoli carnage. 
I think that's what would happen if you tried to facet one of these guys. Yes, yes. It's part of the orthorhombic crystal system. So one of the slightly more complex crystal systems, which you can tell by these like groupings of crystal. They're not incredibly uniform. Fun fact about this, maybe we should mm -hmm. be wearing gloves. It has arsenic in its chemical composition. How about that? I don't, so I'm yeah. going to keep it away from me. <laughs> no, it was uh, it was named, it's one of those gemstones that was named by a mineralogist, Gilbert Joseph Adam, but it was first described in 1866. So it's a zinc arsenate hydroxide. It's often found in conjunction with zinc ores, which actually, like I was looking at the matrix here, I don't know what that is, but it, it did feel like somewhat metallic to me. Rob, where can you find these? So it was originally found, or sorry, described in Chile, but you can find it uh, in a few parts of the world, Mexico and Greece. And as far as stateside, you can find it in California and Utah. Hmm. Uh, I think it's my turn to open, yes. so. Oh, Ooh, I know what okay, this is. Okay, we got faceted ones. Yeah, Askenite. You know because of that color. I like knowing why gemstones are named the way they are, and Afghanite, to the surprise of none, uh, is named after its original locale, Afghanistan, but you can also find it in Pakistan. It was found in Northeast Afghanistan, actually close to the border of Pakistan, so you, uh, you can okay. find it in both places. Originally found in a lapis lazuli. Well, lapis, I think Afghanistan is like the main supplier of lapis lazuli in the world, isn't it? It is a renowned location for it. Well, the color is Gorgeous. fabulous. It's yes. like an electric blue. Mine's kind of saturated. Is yours a little bit? It's a little dark. And these are small, obviously, but actually for afghanite, they're relatively large because you're not going to get large faceted pieces. It's a, definitely a collector's stone. Let's talk about the chemical composition. So there are a few gemstones that have super complex chemical compositions. Tourmaline mm -hmm. is one Tourmaline of them. Um, this has a very long chemical formula. So are you ready? So it's a hydrous sodium, calcium, potassium, sulfate, chloride, carbonate, alumina, silicate. It is just a hodgepodge of different elements that we've got here, but really it's a silicate. Well, it comes together <laughs> to create something really pretty. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned silicate uh, because it's a feldspathoid, which means it resembles a, felds a feldspar, but it has a much lower silica count. So it's about a five and a half to six on the Mohs scale. It has poor toughness. It has perfect cleavage in one direction. So not a super durable gemstone. No, it's not optimal for jewelry, but it's so pretty that you sometimes you just got to facet it anyways. It can actually, it can glow orange under UV light. Fluorescence occurs when a material is exposed to a higher energy wavelength of light, like ultraviolet, either short wave or long wave ultraviolet light. Some uh, gemstones and minerals will actually fluoresce a different color under short wave versus long wave, which is really cool. Oh, huh. let's talk about observation. So it's like a brownish. It has some sort of like golden yellow. It really reminds me of Andalusite on first glance. It's I think I see some eye visible plate chroism. Oh, OK. Well, then I'm going to have to take a second look. To me, it was all about the shape. It was the habit of the crystals. It's like very um, bladed, bladed and choppy. It's kind of like, um, what's choppy that one? Like, uh, what's that one dinosaur that has stegosaurus? Stegosaurus? Yeah. With the plates, the spines on its head? Uh, yeah, it no, kind of reminds yeah, it's me of that. Plates on its back. I think you got really close when you said bladed crystals. I, I believe this is axonite. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I hate you. <laughs> no, I think this is axonite. Is that... Very aptly named. Mm -hmm. It's trichroic, which means that when you view it in different directions, it can display three different colors. So it has this brownish, reddish, this olive green, this yellowish color. That's why I said it reminded me of the Andalusite. So strong trichroism, it's in the triclinic crystal system, which you get a lot of bladed crystals in the triclinic crystal system. The color is due to iron, so it has that, I mean, what, how would you describe that color? It's like a yellowish brown. Uh, I'm not great at describing colors. This is just brown to me. Yeah, uh, there are some angles where sometimes it's green a little. I could be convinced that I'm looking at yellow as well. One thing that you can't see with the naked eye are uh, the phenomena that this possesses both pyroelectric and piezoelectric, which means it can hold an electric charge, whether it's subjected to heat, pyroelectricity, or um, pressure, whether pressure is exerted on it, uh, piezoelectricity. What cartoon was out of the box? Out of the box. Oh, out it was box. called Out of the Box. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I'm gonna unbox our last. Uh, <gasps> I love that one. Wow, holy cow. Okay, this is anhydrite, which it looks kind of thirsty, don't you think? A little bit. What do you think would happen if we uh, let it get a little wet? It would turn to gypsum, which would be a very sad, sad thing. I think it looks like a glacier. No, it totally does. I think this is a very cool specimen. Yeah, look at the striation yeah. on the sides here. It looks like a, a section of the, the wall from- uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah. I say that it looks thirsty because it gets its name and hydrite from anhydrous, meaning without water. If you get anhydrite too wet, whether it's uh, moisture in the air or you dunk it in your water, it turns to gypsum, but you can actually reverse that by Drying cooking it? it. Yeah, no, if you just, if you subject it to heat for long enough, it'll turn right back into um, anhydrite. It's a calcium sulfate. It is in the orthorhombic crystal system. Where was it originally found? It's interesting that uh, it's it's anhydrite, it's without water because it was originally found in the salt mines in Austria, which I imagine are some very dry places for crystals to form. Yes, form. but it actually can be found all over the world. I mean, think about it, it's a calcium oh. sulfate, so you have three ingredients that you need and they're pretty common yeah. ingredients. So that makes sense, but it probably requires just the right conditions. It actually has three planes of perfect cleavage. And so that's why you get some of these like really mm. flat planes. And so you often find it in like a fan-like form, but you can actually also see it in cubes, which I think is really interesting. Oh, that is cool. And this, I would classify as having a greasy luster mm -hmm. or maybe almost, almost bordering on waxy but we'll say greasy. So I really like when gemstones and minerals remind you of something. And the fact, like you were saying, okay. it looks like a glacier. I just, I kind of love that. What's most interesting about this specimen to me or this variety of mineral is its delicate relationship with water, um, how it can transform in the presence of water uh, and transform back with the lack of water. So I think that's a pretty unique feature. So I'd like to take a, take a closer look at this. You can't see the water relationship, but I think you can see the results of it. about A gemstones, head to our new website, gemstones.com, where you can learn all about all the unknown gems we talked about today. So, you know, we only covered, what, five unknown A's. There are actually so many more. Are there any other unknown gemstones that you would like us to talk about? Let us know down below and we'll get right to them. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Thanks for watching.